Hi, and welcome to the Joyous Health Podcast, hosted by me, Joy McCarthy, and my Habs and Business partner, Walker Jordan. On our show, you'll be invited to learn about nutrition, well-being, beauty, family, and business. All the things that we're deeply curious and passionate about. We love to chat and have a few good laughs. And our goal is to bring a dose of joy to your day. Hello, everyone. On today's episode, I chat with Cicely Kellum, who is a registered holistic nutritionist based out of Vancouver, Canada. She helps women clear their acne naturally through holistic nutrition, skincare, supplementation, lifestyle, and mindset. She's the founder of the health and wellness blog, The Pure Life, and has organized and hosted workshops, retreats, and group programs for women from around the world. Some of Cicely's favorite things include decaf coconut lattes, mm, me too, cold ocean dips, oh, I wish I could take advantage of that, living in Toronto, not so much, and tacos. I'm with you there, Cicely. This is a really fantastic, well-rounded chat. And it is such a well-rounded chat because I'm chatting with a fellow holistic nutritionist. So we really hit all the bases of talking about getting to, you know, the root cause of acne, discussing um, the importance of digestive health in managing acne, you know, what are some of the most common dietary and environmental triggers of acne. Interestingly, she shared some foods that are very healthy that can actually be acne triggers that I had actually never heard of. So it's definitely worth, if you have acne, I'm sure that's why you're listening into this conversation. You're definitely going to want to get your pen and paper out because you'll want to take some notes. Uh, This episode is super informative and uh, I think you guys are going to love Cicely. So here is my chat. Welcome to the podcast, Cicely. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. I'm so excited to be on. I'm thrilled you're here. And we were chatting just before we record started recording because I remember when you first started your business and it has been so fantastic to see your growth and how amazing you're doing. So huge congratulations. Thank you so much. It's been an incredible journey. So when did you first become interested in like natural health and holistic nutrition? Yeah. And I feel like every nutritionist has some kind of pivotal moment in their journey that really sparked this for them. And for me, I feel like my health journey really started when I was quite young. So when I was around nine years old, I hit puberty really early. So I got my period when I was nine, which was like such a wild ride. I was experiencing things like acne and hormonal mood swings. And that was all, you know, really, really tough for me growing up, but it wasn't until I made the connection between, you know, nutrition and holistic living until I experienced really severe digestive issues. So digestive issues were always kind of at the core of my holistic health journey. And that started around the end years of when I was in high school. And what happened then was you know, I was waking up every single day with severe bloating, severe pain, um, really irregular bowel movements. And I actually went to go see a gastro specialist. So a doctor who was specializing in digestive health at the time. And I saw him for about a year. Every Wednesday after school, I would go and visit him and he would run all different kinds of tests. So blood tests. I even had a colonoscopy, which was like traumatic in itself at 18 years old. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it was, it was really disappointing because at the end of this year, he sat me down and he said, okay, you know what, Cicely, unfortunately we've done all the testing we can do. I can't help you. There's nothing more we can do. And he kind of sent me on my way. And that for me was so disappointing here, but I knew intuitively that there was more out there. I was thinking there must be something going on because I can't live like this for the rest of my life. And so that's when I kind of took to understanding which foods were affecting my symptoms. And I really had to take it all apart. I'd never heard of a nutritionist or a naturopath. So I wish I had at the time, I wish I had had a podcast uh, like this as a resource Mm -hmm. at the time, but unfortunately I didn't. So I like went to the library, I rented all these books. I took to YouTube and I started to really connect the dots between like how foods affected my body. And that carried me through my early, my late teens, early twenties, kind of as I was going through life, experiencing different symptoms like digestive issues. And then it kind of evolved into acne. And I'm sure we'll dive very deeply into this, but that was kind of 
the, the trigger for my journey. And it wasn't until I got so deep and at like the worst part of my health journey where my digestion was off, my acne was off. I was struggling with mental health issues. My anxiety was through the roof. That's when I discovered CSNN, the Canadian school of natural nutrition. Mm. And I enrolled. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, so that's a very long story, but you got, the no, that <laughs> I was, I'm like, I'm fully into it. Um, so, okay. So when you enrolled at CSNN, you hadn't actually gotten to the root of your health issues yet. I mean, I'd really connected the dots between like, okay, I basically self-diagnosed myself with lactose intolerance and gluten intolerance because the doctors refused to test me for those. They just said I had an eating disorder, which I didn't, I was just in so much pain. And so I kind of just started to really connect the dots. And I had already started my food blog at the time. And I was kind of posting what I was eating and I was connecting with other like-minded individuals. So when I went into the program, I felt like I had a good understanding of, you know, the fact that food affects us, but it wasn't until I really learned it from like an education, like in a school setting that my life changed forever. So you mentioned lactose and gluten. So Mm -hmm. when you sort of, when you cut those things out, um, cut dairy out, did you, was it immediate? Were there other things you started to change? Uh, How, take us kind of through the timeline. Yeah, it's super interesting because when I first was struggling with digestive issues, I definitely thought it was like just the lactose and then just gluten specifically. So anything that had gluten, anything that had lactose. So I would switch my products to like lactose-free products. And then I literally eliminated everything that had gluten. I didn't really understand that there was more to it, right? So Mm -hmm. dairy and it's conventional dairy in itself was inflammatory. I was eating the wrong kind of dairy. I was eating the wrong kind of gluten products. You know, I didn't actually have celiac disease. And so what happened was I eliminated all of it and I I did feel better, but when I started to reintroduce it again, so there was a point where I felt really good and I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, add a little bit of this back in or a little bit of this. And I just, all my symptoms came back. Mm -hmm. So the second time around when I said, Kate, I feel more educated, I'm really going to cut everything out and I'm going to be really intentional about bringing all the good foods in. Um, That's when I really, it was so quick how quickly I saw my skin change, my body change, my mental health change. Like, I think it took like a month to really turn my entire life around. That's amazing. And it's okay. So if we can just go back a little bit, you mentioned you got your period at nine years old, which is definitely Mm -hmm. young. Um, Were you struggling with acne pretty much once you went through puberty all throughout your teenage years or what was that? What was happening there? Like, did it, was it triggered by going through puberty? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of us do naturally experience acne around puberty, just with the shift in our hormones, specifically the androgen, the male sex hormones, those tend to like surge when we in our, are in our like early uh, or late teens. And so I did experience acne, but when I was 15 years old, I was put on the birth control pill for like contraceptive methods, but also for acne. So one of the selling points that my doctor sold me on was like, this is going to clear your acne and regulate your cycle. And, you know, I wish Mm. I knew what I know now, (laughs) but I thought that's amazing. That's a miracle. So I basically had my under my acne, like quote unquote under control, um, until I was, until I went off the pill. Right. And that's like a whole other story in itself. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think so many of us women can relate to that. I mean, I went on the birth control pill, I think at like 14 years old Mm. for, because I was getting really bad cramps and Mm -hmm. didn't go off of it until my late twenties. Like I cannot believe I was on it for that long and Mm -hmm. suffered for so long. And I feel, you know, even years later, I, I feel like I'm still you know, there's still issues with hormonal imbalance that I have to make sure like there's certain supplements I still have to take. Um, but enough about me, let's get back to you. Let's talk about what role a healthy gut. It's so great that you, before even becoming a nutritionist, you realize, oh, like my gut is connected to my skin. And before I actually get to asking you about that connection, 
Did you, you were seeing a, a gastroenterologist. Were you ever seeing a dermatologist for your skin? So at the time there was about a six month wait list and I actually thought this isn't worth it. And I, I moved to Berlin. So I was thrown off the wait list. <laughs> oh yeah. I so, bet. Yeah. I never actually had that experience, but I had a ton of friends and family who went through that experience and just hearing their negative experiences. I just thought, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. No. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I mean, I guess there's, I'm sure there's, you know, dermatologists and just like, you know, with medical doctors, there's functional medical doctors popping Mm -hmm. up now, which is great. But, you know, I feel that generally speaking, and from my own experience with the dermatologist for rosacea, there was just no consideration of the role that diet would play. It was like, you know, that was like an alien idea that, you know, diet could potentially, um, impact, impact what was going on. But so let's talk about, so you had a lot of digestive issues, what role, and I'm sure many people do. So Mm -hmm. many people have digestive problems and don't connect it to their skin. So what role does it, what role does a healthy gut play in the development or the prevention of acne? Yes. And I'm so happy you're asking this question because literally every single one of my clients that comes to me, even if they don't have like seeable or digestive issues that they can feel, there's almost always an underlying gut health imbalance or issue going on. Most of us do struggle with our gut health just because of the lack of knowledge that we've had over the years. I mean, the world of the microbiome, as you know, Joy, we are learning new things like literally every single month. There is Mm -hmm. new research, new data. It's fascinating. I I like to call it like our microbiome is like our secret garden. We're like constantly unlocking parts of the garden. And then we we see it. Yeah. It's like so mesmerizing. Yeah. I really love that analogy. Yeah. And I recently started reading a book called Fiber Fueled, which has a lot of new research on the microbiome. And last night I was reading it and I remember it said that we produce over 30 neurotransmitters from our gut microbiome, which is crazy if you think Mm -hmm. about it. So these are things obviously like, you know, serotonin, which that again, gets converted to melatonin, which helps helps us sleep at night. Um, You know, our dopamine, like all of our neurotransmitters that make us feel good. So the fact that we struggle with mental health so deeply with acne, like a lot of people struggle with this, right? It's, it's no surprise because most people are struggling with gut health imbalances when they do experience acne. So that's a big thing to think about, but In terms of like what actually goes on in terms of like with the gut health and acne, there's a few key things that I really tend to see in my practice. And the first one being estrogen metabolism. So a lot of our estrogen actually gets metabolized in our gut. So like by our gut bacteria, which again is kind of new research, super fascinating. And this happens a lot with a lot of my clients that come off of the birth control pill. So, right. So that like estradiol, the progestin, those artificial hormones that have been circulating in your body from the pill, they need somewhere to go once you stop it, right? We need to detox those effectively. And so if your gut health isn't working and not able to actually metabolize the estrogen properly, then man, we're just going to see a host of issues. And that's when we really start to see other hormones surge to meet that imbalance. And what about, do you see as well, constipation related to acne? So if like someone's on the birth control pill and they're backed up, Mm -hmm. Um, I can imagine that makes even worse. Can you talk a little bit about that? Do you see that in your practice as well? You know, constipation related to acne as well. I am still so shocked to hear people come to me and they say, Cicely, I only have a bowel movement every three days. Is that normal? (laughs) (laughs) I'm in, I'm in shock. So uh, definitely this is a huge issue, right? I usually say it's great to have like one to three healthy bowel movements per day um, and make sure you're like eliminating effectively and enough for reasons like estrogen detoxification or just general detoxification. Mm -hmm. But a good like visual with acne and constipation is if you're not eliminating those hormones and toxins, they're literally just recirculating in the body. And this can cause inflammation. This can cause toxic buildup. This can cause a surge of androgen hormones like testosterone, DHEA, um, 
you know, those, those are all acne triggering. And so looking at your bowel movements is always one of the first things I recommend. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. So you're saying, you know, aim for like one to three per day. And if your doctor is telling you, oh, it's okay that you're only going once a week. (laughs) No, we're here to tell you that's definitely not okay. So get pooping is really Mm -hmm. key. Now, do you think there's certain areas of the skin on your, like on your face? Is there, you know, you see like these facial maps um, and, you know, people who are slow at eliminating, have hormonal imbalance. Do you believe that acne will show up in certain areas of the face? Yeah. And this is really ingrained in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, what they call we call face mapping, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I do like to look at that, but I also just, I'm looking at the clients I've worked with over the years and there really do seem to be repetitive patterns on where we break out. And that's because we have different receptors in different areas of the face. So we have things called androgen receptors where that's when we tend to break out with like deep cystic acne. But when it comes to digestion, usually what I see is if people are blocked up or constipated or just having irregular bowel movements, it really tends to be on the forehead. And oh, interesting. yeah, and there's different types of acne. So I have seen a lot of um, like really small, almost like not poppable pimples, like clusters mm-hmm. of pimples on the forehead that often has to do with dysbiosis in the gut. Um, it's very specifically, I've seen that over and over and over again. Oh, interesting. And what about mm-hmm. other areas? Like one thing that I see a lot, I mean, I don't, I don't do one-on-ones anymore as a nutritionist, Mm -hmm. but I see women, I see a lot of women with acne, like around their chin, um, the side of their mouth. Do you see that? And what, do you know what that is linked to? Yeah. So from my understanding, this is where the androgen receptors live. And so this is often very associated with hormones. Mm -hmm. And so often what we see is like the chin and the jawline. Um, that's usually some kind of estrogen progesterone imbalance. And then those high androgens because of it. But when we see chest and back acne, that is pretty much a huge red flag for those like surged high androgens. Um, that's just what I've seen in my practice time and time again. This is interesting. You're saying this. Cause I remember a couple of years ago, um, when I sort of started my rosacea, like I had rosacea acne mm-hmm. and, um, I remember seeing my dermatologist once and, uh, he's like, Oh, so, uh, so do you get chest or back acne? And, uh, I have never. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, one of my recommendations to you is that you go on the birth control pill. I'm like, okay, so Mm. I'm in my 40s now. (laughs) You're recommending in my 40s after I've had a child, I should go on the birth control pill and I do not have back or, you know, chest acne, but because I have rosacea. So it's just interesting. (laughs) It's interesting what the recommendations are. It's Uh, Yeah. It just, it kind of drives me crazy. So how can people support their digestive health or what recommendations do you give to your clients um, to help them manage their acne? Yeah. So there's different components to digestive health, but one of the most important and most overlooked like ways to support digestive health is looking at how we're eating. So yes, what we're eating is so important, right? We really want to focus on those whole foods, like tons of veggies, lots of fiber, really focusing on like getting in your greens. I always recommend like half to three quarters of your plate, raw and cooked veggies. That's going to be like your number one fuel for amazing gut health. So in the past, we've always really focused on like prebiotic foods, which feed the good gut bacteria, right. And then the probiotic foods, which often come from fermented foods. And those are really, really important, but I think we're really starting to understand it's all different kinds of foods that play a role in gut health, right? Totally. Have you noticed in your practice at all that some people with acne don't do well with fermented foods? Had you ever see that? Yeah, this is such an interesting topic. I know you mentioned this as well in your rosacea podcast, and it was something that I was really curious to explore, but what I've done in my practice is we've just really focused on strengthening the gut through like, again, like how we eat our food. Like, are we 
you know, eating mindfully, chewing our food, and then like using different herbs and supplements to kind of nourish the gut lining and then including lots of fiber rich foods and all that jazz. So that when you do integrate the fermented foods, your gut's in a place where it can totally handle this and it's not kind of fueling the fire. Right. Um, I think that's so key. Yeah, totally. That's the thing. Like there's, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, you know, there's like 30 foods I can't even eat. Like I'm just Mm -hmm. so sensitive to these foods, but really you like what you're saying is like, focus on your gut health, heal your gut so that you can enjoy fermented foods and you can eat foods that have histamines. Now at this point, do you eat any dairy at all or, or any gluten or are those things that you, you still always avoid? Like, do you think that as your gut gets healthier, you can eat those foods? Or do you think that for you, those foods are always going to be triggers? Yeah, definitely. So I have genetically acne prone skin. So I always have to be cautious and, you know, really focusing on nourishing my body so that I don't experience a breakout, um, as do a lot of people who have genetically acne prone skin. So the thing with, like you just mentioned, I feel like I've gotten my gut into a really good place now and it's taking years, right? Like it can mm-hmm. take years because if you think of all the years we've put our body through like just awful diets and stress and like, it can take years to really get healthy. And I think people often forget about this, right? They're like, I want gut, good gut health in a month, right? I want right. Good in a month, but it actually takes months uh, or could take years even to really bring your body back to balance. So what I eat now is, and what I usually recommend to my clients as well is swapping cow's dairy for goat or sheep dairy. And as you've talked about this in your podcast before, Joy, um, it's really important to recognize that they have different types of casein, right? So goat and sheep dairy is more A2 casein, while cow dairy is more predominantly A1 casein. And so we just tend to see with A2, it's just way easier on acne prone individuals. And I'm personally also very lactose intolerant and I Mm. tend to be able to eat goat and sheep dairy, no problem. But this did take a few years of completely cutting out all kinds of dairy to really give my body a break and then like slowly integrating these foods back in, in their whole most best quality, you know, forms. That's really what's key, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. if you, if you do all this work to support your gut health and then you're like, okay, now I can eat cheese strings. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Probably not going to help, but it's so, I mean, dairy is such a well-established acne trigger, right? It's not Mm -hmm. even like it's, it's just experience. Like this is actually, there's research that shows that, you know, acne is triggered by dairy. So I I feel like anyone listening to this, that would be probably one of the first things to consider. And still to this day, like I find myself, I have to be so careful with dairy, like like, just like you, like cow dairy. If I eat some, I'll probably wake up with a zit the next day. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. not the end of the world. I've never had acne, like cystic acne or anything. For me, it's always been more sort of rosacea and rosacea type acne. Um, but dairy is, is such a big one. And also like just the quality of dairy nowadays, right? Pasteurized, homogenized. There's just nothing really left that's valuable un- unless you're choosing really good quality. Like you mentioned, if you're having like a good quality, you know, sheep milk cheese, a raw sheep milk cheese, that type of thing. So um, are there any other common food triggers that you see Um, in your practice, aside from those things for people? Yes, there seem to be a few common ones. We've all heard them before, you know, dairy, sugar, and gluten, but I thought we could maybe pick this apart a little bit. And then once you've got that covered, I want to give some recommendations as well on things you might not be aware of. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't already addressed the dairy, refined sugar and refined gluten, that is the number one place to start, right? So any kind of those processed foods, you just want to swap for healthier alternatives, um, swapping out those refined vegetable oils that Joy talks about a lot for like olive oil and avocado oil, um, focusing on cow dairy instead of, sorry, goat dairy instead of cow dairy. And then instead of refined sugar, just really checking your labels and swapping to more natural sugars like raw honey is my favorite because you're getting those immune supporting Mm. benefits, right? Yeah, totally. Do you see a lot? Can I just interject for Mm -hmm. a second about the sugar? 
Do you see with your clients, do you see a lot of sugar addicts? Oh yeah. And they don't even know it. (laughs) Yeah. So there's often an issue with the sugar feeding the gut, the bad gut bacteria, Mm. right? And so they, they think they're craving it, but really it's their gut bacteria controlling those cravings. So I always tell them it is possible to get rid of your cravings by changing your gut microbiome. Yes. So true. My gut Mm. microbiome really likes chocolate. Oh, mine too. I read that that's <laughs> actually a thing. It yes, it on. is. Yeah. So yeah. easy. I know. I know. That's why I'm like, it's, it's my gut bacteria. Mm-hmm. Um, sugar. So we're talking about sugar. So you're seeing like a lot of sugar addicts and yeah. that's their gut bacteria saying, give me more sugar. Definitely. And then also, you know, when we give into that and we often, I often see with a lot of my clients, blood sugar imbalance Mm -hmm. or like insulin resistance. And this is very common in like PCOS. Honestly, most, most people have imbalanced blood sugar. Um, and it's not so much like how much sugar they're eating, but it's kind of more like, instead of eating, lunch, they'll have like a cupcake and they'll think like, okay, I already had my lunch, like my cupcake. So I'm not going to eat lunch. And that's like a recipe for disaster for your blood sugar and your skin. Oh yeah, totally. Just Mm -hmm. eating. Sorry. You have clients that are just eating like desserts and nothing else. Yeah. And so, or they'll have like, you know, avocado toast, which is amazing, but they'll use like the white bread and then there's no protein and like not much, not much fiber. And there's just like, there's so many things that we can add in or swap out that will really make a huge difference to our sugar cravings and the way our body responds to the sugar. And now for a short break. I've always been obsessed with skincare products, but because of my sensitive skin, I have to be super careful about what I use. That's one reason I was inspired to create my own line of all natural products that are safe and gentle enough to use on all skin types. This trio of products includes the Gentless Fresh Face Cleanser, a super refreshing magical mist facial toner, and the ultimate in skin nourishment, our Hella Hydrating Serum and that's our incredible skincare trio. We crafted our line to include powerful plant-based ingredients like certified organic rosehip oil, comfrey root, rose geranium, and chamomile. It was also important to me that our products be made locally with natural organic ingredients that have functional benefits that include things like anti-inflammatory action, super hydrating, and antioxidant power to prevent premature wrinkling. Every single ingredient in all three of our skincare products has a purpose. You will find zero fillers in our products. And when it comes to creating a safe, all natural skincare line, what we put in is just as important as what we leave out. You know, the conventional beauty industry is the furthest thing from clean. In fact, according to the David Suzuki Foundation, up to 80% of conventional personal care products contain the toxic 10 ingredients. This includes everything from parabens to coal tar derived colors to formaldehyde releasing agents and hormone disrupting ingredients such as artificial fragrances that contain phthalates. Unlike conventional products, our skincare line is free from all these harsh chemicals, making it completely safe and non-toxic for you and the planet. With our skincare trio, you're getting the softest, smoothest skin in as easy as one, two, three. So first you start out your routine with our fresh face cleanser. It's certified organic and super gentle on your skin to leave it feeling supple and refreshed, never stripped and dry. Our cleanser is made with ingredients like cold pressed organic golden jojoba, which helps to really balance your skin and seal in the moisture while removing excess oil and your makeup and pollution. And comfrey root helps to promote a healthy skin tone and chamomile extract reduces redness and irritation and can actually help to speed up cell regeneration. So you can feel confident knowing that you're safely cleansing your face and removing makeup without any harsh chemicals and know that that like tight feeling you get on your face when you use other products is actually not a good thing. And that means you've actually stripped your skin of that natural oil barrier and impacted your skin microbiome, which you definitely do not want to do. So next, you give yourself a refresh with our ultra-soothing, alcohol-free, magical mist facial toner. You'll be ready to nourish and balance your skin with a super-powered combination of skin-loving, antioxidant-rich ingredients. 
We included anti-inflammatory rose geranium to calm skin irritation, calendula to soothe, and witch hazel to balance and tone. This alcohol-free toner is infused with ingredients beneficial for a variety of skin conditions, from acne to eczema, making it safe for all skin types. And it also provides the perfect dewy surface to apply the third and final product, our Hella Hydrating Serum. I also wanna mention that personally, I used to get, you know, once a month, get that hormonal acne with a couple zits on my cheek, and I actually never get that anymore. And that is thanks to the rose geranium in our magical mist because it is antibacterial. But next up, and finally, we're gonna talk about our Hella Hydrating Serum. So this simple but powerful serum is made with a combination of just two ingredients, cold pressed organic rosehip oil and hyaluronic acid to really seal in moisture and hydrate your skin. The anti-inflammatory and antioxidant rich ingredients in this serum will calm any irritation, reduce fine lines and give you a natural glow. Rosehip oil is a source of vitamin E that will help to soothe and calm your skin, which can make it great if you're dealing with anything like rosacea, eczema, acne prone skin, or even um, acne scars. Rosehip oil is amazing for that. And hyaluronic acid is so immensely hydrating that it makes your skin feel plump and smooth and supple. So this three-step skincare routine is all you need for soft, glowing, healthy skin. So treat yourself to the best in plant-based, simplified organic skincare and harness the power of nature for incredible results. So you can check out our skincare trio at shopjoyoushealth.com slash skincare, and you can get a discount 10% off your entire order by using the discount code podcastbeauty10. And now back to our guest. Can we talk about some of the recommendations you have for, you know, getting rid of those sugar cravings? Because it's so easy to just say like, don't eat sugar, but you know, <laughs> people are like, oh, well, yeah, okay, whatever. I try and c- cut out sugar and I'm just like this sugar monster. Like, I think, you know, I'm sure you've got like some great suggestions for like, how can you make your meal more blood sugar balancing and how can you, how can you overcome sugar cravings? Cause you can, it's not just a matter of control. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of getting those hormones balanced so that you don't feel like you want to have that cupcake. It's not, it's nothing about like self-control. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I think one of the most profound kind of swaps that I've seen in my practice, especially for women who are like in their reproductive years, um, is eating enough protein and eating a protein rich protein breakfast is essential. Mm, Right. And I was vegan for many years and people would always joke, where do you get your protein? I'd be, I'd laugh and I'd think it was hilarious. And, but honestly, (laughs) looking back, I was not eating enough protein. So, right. So just being really cautious or conscious of how much protein you're eating and like really making sure you're having like either plant-based or animal-based protein at every single meal, especially first thing in the morning, right? We're so used to making like a smoothie or oatmeal Mm -hmm. or pancakes. It's like really make sure you're using a clean, like acne-friendly protein powder, or you're just getting some real like hemp hearts or eggs or just something that's really going to help stabilize your blood sugar first thing in the morning. So you're less likely to crave sugar throughout the day is a huge one. That is such a great, such a great, um, recommendation. And I'm like, yes, joy, that's what you need to do. (laughs) So I find like Monday to Friday is like the mornings are just like so busy, but the weekends, I always make time to have like scrambled eggs and I could go like six hours and feel totally satisfied, like completely. This is a good reminder for me. Like eggs are my total. They're my, one of my favorite foods to eat. So it's just a matter of like, making time for it, um, making, you know, time for your own self-care. You mentioned an acne friendly protein powder. Do you have like some do's and don'ts with when it comes to that? Definitely. So obviously avoiding whey because whey is from cow dairy. That seems to be a huge trigger for a lot of people. Um, I personally, like my favorite protein to add to smoothies is just hemp seeds. Cause I think three tablespoons Mm -hmm. is like 10 grams of protein, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Which is amazing. Right. So just, it makes it nice and creamy, but 
I would choose usually like some kind of fermented or sprouted pea protein. So it's easier mm-hmm. to digest or pumpkin seed protein powder is amazing because it's high in zinc, which helps fight acne. Right. Um, That's a great yeah, those are all amazing. But one thing to really look out for is I've noticed a lot of protein powders these days contain added superfoods that could mm-hmm. actually be big triggers for acne. So I see a lot of the top ones have things like maca powder, which is amazing, but maca is actually a testosterone booster. So for people who already have really bad cystic acne or they have PCOS or something, I find that really does trigger acne for people. That's a good one to know. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I didn't know it for years. And I remember thinking like, you know, I'm eating all this maca and bee pollen and spirulina, which we'll get into in a second, but I'm still breaking out. And then I learned, um, you know, bee pollen is also, you know, it's incredible and they're amazing foods. It's just like, when you do have really bad acne, things can trigger like really, really fast. Right. Yeah. So So you want to cut those things out when you, Mm -hmm. yeah. So sorry. So bee pollen as well. That's another one you find is a trigger. Yeah. It seems to be like testosterone booster, like high in B vitamins that might trigger it. Um, and then also another one to look out for is algae is like spirulina or chlorella, unless yeah. you're iodine deficient. So people who have enough iodine and they're taking super iodine rich chlorella or spirulina, things like that, that I also find can be a trigger for some people. Oh, interesting. And sorry, why is that? Because the iodine, the excess just of iodine. tends to be the iodine. Yeah. There's not enough research done on it yet. So I don't want to say like avoid all these foods. It's just something to be cautious of and aware of. Yeah. So I think what you're saying is like, if someone listening to this is like, oh my God, but I have my maca chocolate almond butter smoothie every day. I think the thing is with that is, you know, just try taking a break from it for like two weeks and yeah. then you can see for yourself if, totally. you know, I think that that's really what's key is you're not saying like these foods are bad. Um, it's just that these foods may not be ideal for what you're going through right now. And you want to identify, you know, all the things that could be potential triggers because Mm -hmm. when you have a skin issue, it is extremely motivating to, you know, when you, when you do have something showing up on your face, at least I find it, found it with myself, that is motivation right there to like change things because it really does. Like, did you, you mentioned your mental health was affected. Was that because of your gut health or was that because of having acne or was it like a bit of both? I think there was a huge combination of things going on that was definitely connected to, so my gut health, right. Probably wasn't producing enough serotonin. I was also on the pill at the time. So Mm. I was experiencing a lot of nutrient deficiencies that again, no one told me about when they put me on the pill. So things like vitamin C, selenium, B vitamins, you know, those were all being depleted after being on the pill for years. And then of course, like physically looking at and feeling your skin every single time you look in the mirror, every time you put on makeup, it is a reminder. And society has deemed acne as like ugly and unhealthy. So it's truly so tough on your mental health. It really is. And then you become, did you find this? Like, I find that it took me probably six, like once my skin like cleared, I'd say it took me at least six months to stop obsessing. Like Mm -hmm. I became so obsessed with my skin that I would like go, when I would go out like grocery shopping and I bumped into someone, I'd be like, oh my God, they're staring at my skin. Oh my God, they can see. (laughs) I don't know if that was just me, but it's like you, when you have something like right on your face like that, you just, it it becomes like obsessive. Like, did Mm -hmm. you, were you, did, did you experience that too? Or is this just me? (laughs) Yeah, it actually really was tough for me during quarantine because I was starting to experience, um, like the, the masks were kind of triggering. Oh my God. Breakouts. The worst. Yeah. But it was, I was actually being triggered by a hormonal imbalance that I hadn't addressed yet. And so I was kind of my own guinea pig at the time, but I noticed, um, you know, I was obsessed with picking out my skin because mm-hmm. it was a way to control. And it was like, I was just, so I just needed it gone. And I said to myself, okay, Cicely, I want you to stop picking for 30 days and just see what happens. <laughs> okay. I did it. Yeah. And, and guess what happened? My acne never came back. Wow. So Kim, yeah. do you want to talk about that? Because I'm sure mm-hmm. everyone is, a, who is not a picker? I everyone know. like picks up their skin. <laughs> it's so hard not to. So how did, so why does that make it worse? 
So it's the number one thing I recommend to stop doing when it comes to like skincare is stop picking. Please (laughs) stop picking. The only reason you need to stop picking is that it actually will make your acne worse. And the reason for this is because when you're picking, you're making basically like a, like a cut on your skin, like you're damaging your skin. You're telling your skin, oh my gosh, it needs to heal. It needs to repair. But unfortunately, when we have acne prone skin or when we have acne or rosacea or whatever it may be, our skin barrier and our skin biome is completely compromised. And so it doesn't have the ability to heal itself naturally if you're constantly picking at it. Right. So, and you're also spreading bacteria and it just like makes it way worse. And a lot of clients come to me after a week of not picking and they'll text me and they'll say, Oh my goodness, I didn't pick my zit and it went away overnight. I can't (laughs) believe it. I'm like, I can't believe it. (laughs) So do you, okay. So for those who are the pickers, like, do you have, what do you, do you have like specific recommendations, like natural recommendations when you do, when you are, when you are dealing with acne and you know that you got to do all the stuff like to support your gut, you know, clean up your diet. Are there things that in like the acute phase Um, that you recommend? Like, do you like love tea tree oil? Do you not love it? And if not, why? Like, are there certain things that you recommend or don't recommend for your skin? Yes. To answer your question first about tea tree, I have like a love hate relationship with it because (laughs) uh, it's worked wonders for me, but it also is really intense. So, right. So a lot of people do well with it. A lot of people don't. So What I tend to recommend instead is pimple patches and so those little, I think they're hydrocolloid. I might be saying that incorrectly. Oh, cool. Pimple. Is that the brand like pimple patch? So there's mighty patch. There's zit sticka. Those are kind of the two that I've used that work really well. Some of them have like salicylic acid in it, but it's mainly because it stops you from picking. You just do your skincare, slap a patch on, you go to bed and then You just don't touch it and hopefully it's come to a head or it's gone the next day. And it also, you they usually have some kind of antibacterial or like poor cleansing aspect to them. I've never heard of this before. Mm -hmm. Um, You know what? When I was a teenager, which was a while ago, (laughs) um, (laughs) we used to use like something called oxy something. Yes. I had that. You know what I'm talking about? It was like, yeah, yeah. That stuff was nasty. And then, oh, yeah. yeah, but with, um, tea tree, I've, I feel the same as you like with tea tree oil for me personally, that scars my skin because mm-hmm. my skin is so fair and just like being, you know, Celtic descent. I just like, you know, those pink undertones like tea mm-hmm. tree will make my skin like the, the zip will go away and then the redness will be there for like, honestly, like two months. So I think that's a good warning, um, for people Um, you mentioned, sorry, just to go back. I don't know if we talked about all the, I know you talked about maca and bee pollen and spirulina are things, some things that people don't think about. I forgot to ask you, were there any other things that can be acne triggers, um, that people don't really think about? I mean, there are, but I really don't like to create food fear for people. Like, you know, for example, um, Peanut butter is a big trigger, but if you buy the Valencia peanuts made with peanut butter, yeah. then they don't actually have that mold, right? That toxic mold that can trigger the acne. Oh, so, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Good to know. So Costco actually sells the Valencia peanut yeah, butter. Yeah, that's easy to find. It. Every yeah. food store has that. Yeah. Um, okay, that's really good to know. And then what about um, lifestyle factors like stress and... Oh my gosh. Yes. Do you have some recommendations there? Yeah. I think, I think stress is of course one thing that all of us are dealing with just because we're living in in a pandemic, but also because we've just, we just live such stressful lives and that can affect our gut health and that can increase sebum production. We know when our cortisol is high, then sebum is produced and that creates kind of oily skin and clogged pores. So definitely just I know people always say stress less and don't be so stressed, but it's like, you really actually have to actively take charge of where can you remove stress in your life and where can you change your mindset to uh, address stress in a different way? So there's, there are ways to do it. You really just have to take a deep look at your life and ask yourself where you can make those swaps. So do you have some suggestions? Yep. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I want to say meditation, but people often get scared by the word meditation. So I recommend just like five deep breaths before you sit down to eat a meal is really great uh, for your digestion and for your stress. Um, time blocking throughout your day or like, like literally scheduling in a walk or else you won't mm-hmm. go on a walk if you don't schedule it in. <laughs> yeah. So true. Right? Yeah. So prioritizing your mental health. Yeah. So important. Mm-hmm. And it's so easily overlooked. Mm-hmm, I think there's a lot of people, I think the other thing is at least I, I find myself like, I'm like, Oh, I'm not stressed. And then I'm like, and people, my husband's like, Oh, wait a minute. Like, you, <laughs> you know, you've had this, like, I don't know if you're like that, but I just feel like a lot of people, like they think of stress as like this big, horrific, something, some horrific event has to happen, mm-hmm. but stress can be like this low grade just like nagging stress that you have every day um, and, and doing things to address it that I think, I feel like that's sort of like an overlooked area. Like maybe it's like, Oh, like I'm just, I'm so behind it. I have no healthy foods. I haven't grocery shopped. Da, 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 da. Like, just like, you know, this monkey brain spinning on Monday thinking, you know, you don't, you aren't prepared for the week. So, you know, just making sure on the weekend, like you said, time block, like schedule. Okay. This is what I'm, I'm going to go grocery shopping on Sundays. You know what I've done actually. And I only did this starting in the pandemic because it became available. I never thought I would be that person to buy groceries online, but (laughs) you know what? (laughs) I, I mean, I still, because I shop at a bunch of different places, but there is the place that I do one of my biggest shops I've been shopping online and it just saves me so much time. Yeah. Like I used to think, oh, it's like so lazy, like just go to the grocery store. But now I'm like, okay, actually this is going to save me like over an hour and I could be doing something else. I could be going for a nature walk while someone is collecting my groceries and I'm only paying like an extra 10 bucks for it. So that's, that's one thing like I have found that has like, that's like lessened my stress. So I think you know, just finding little ways, little things, um, that can just take, take stuff off your plate. Cause I find with people who are really busy, right. You just have so many, your to-do list is like never ending. So just mm-hmm. finding ways to, or, or asking for help, you yeah. know, like getting someone like with, with my husband Walker, like if I, if I really want to have a workout when we like, I don't like working out in the morning. I like working out at the end of the day. I'll say to him when we're, we're coming home, I'll be like, you know what, can you make dinner tonight? Because I really want to do workout. And Mm -hmm. he will always say yes. And he does the same with me. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I think if you do have a partner or someone else, you can kind of rely on, like, it's okay to need people, (laughs) like get Mm -hmm. people to help you out. Yeah. And I, I feel like this is also where we get it wrong. Like, let's say we do have that hour free up right? You know, you've ordered the groceries online so you can do a workout or whatever. We often like overachieving is very sexy, but it's actually way sexier to like honor your alone time and downtime and your mental health. So instead of filling that hour with something that you really had to get done with work, it's like, you need to physically remove yourself. Like you said, hand the duties over to someone else and physically remove yourself so that you can really focus on you when appropriate. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, especially for the the moms and the dads, the parents out there listening who, you know, they're like, oh, I don't get any alone time other than when I'm in the washroom. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, this is when you, you just have to like make yourself a priority. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if that alone time is when your kids are in bed, then make a point of not just scrolling on social media for that hour before bed or just like you know, mindlessly watching something on Netflix. Although I do like mindlessly watching stuff. I mean, I totally watched love is blind. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I, I love actually, it. It, what, did you watch it? I watched the first season, but I got to say I was a big fan of too hot to handle. That was my, Oh, I never show. saw that. Oh my God. That's it's so bad. Funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes you just need that, that, you know, even though it does seem like a, like a little trashy, sometimes you just need stuff to like shut your brain off. I mean, that's what I find for myself. Like, I really love like fantasy shows. Like I love Lord of the Rings and like Mm -hmm. all these different, I love those kinds of shows. And I find they just honestly like transplant me to like a totally, I feel like I'm in, I'm in the movie. (laughs) I just love it so much. 
Um, now I totally got off track on it. That's okay. I, I actually wanted to say, I love that you said that because one of my tips that I give to clients is read before bed, but do not read a self-help book because oh. I mean, for some of them, it is very appropriate and I do love yeah. it, but a lot of us are already constantly feeding ourselves with information, right? And sometimes we just need to escape into a good novel. I love that. That is such great advice. Yay. Like, yeah. Thank you for that. It's so true because you can get so like, if you have a really great book, that's such an amazing way to like spend an hour before bed. Or if you have some time on the weekend, instead of like sitting in front of the TV or working through your to-do list, it feels like so good to just like curl up on the couch with a good book. Definitely. I love that. That's, and that's so de-stressing that in a way, if you think about it, it really is almost like, a it's almost meditative because Mm -hmm. you, you know, even though your mind isn't blank, obviously it's just, you're not thinking of all the things you need to do. You're not stressing. You're not thinking about the past or the future. You're exactly. really just like in the present moment reading. That's a really great recommendation. Mm -hmm. Um, are there specific, let's get back to the nutrition for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any foods or supplements you specifically recommend to eat? Now I know we talked a lot about like what to avoid, but are there certain, um, you know, superfoods or even just regular foods or natural health products that you recommend for dealing with an acne flare up or, and I should say, and in, in addition to that, perhaps for prevention too? Yeah. I mean, I said, since like food fear and restrictive dieting is so big with people who have acne because they're mm -hmm. so scared to eat anything to cause flare up. Right. Um, totally. I really do like to focus on like the 80 to 20 approach where we, you know, focus on 80% of the diet is like nourishing whole foods cooked at home, like really just delicious and good for your body where 20% is more like soul food, you know, going to the birthday party, going out for dinner, going to your in-laws. And it's really important to keep that balance. And everybody it looks different for everybody. But when I do say this to my clients, it's like a breath of fresh air for them because they're so used to being like, Hey, absolutely no dairy, absolutely no gluten. Right. So I think keeping that at 80, 20 approach is really, really healthy. But in terms of like specifically what, what their acne triggers are, there's a lot that you can do. Of course, we always want to focus on a whole food diet. And I know you always talk about this, Joy. You're such a good example of this. Just focusing on real foods, like ditch the packaged foods if you're unsure and just focus on those whole food protein sources like eggs and chickpeas and tempeh or, you know, getting in just and like you said, on one of your podcast episodes, an apple has only one ingredient, apple. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So just really focusing on like, what's your go-to snack? Okay, like apple and nuts. You don't need a protein bar. Like you can literally get the same thing from like a piece of fruit and hard boiled egg and some nuts. So really focusing on those whole foods. And then if you feel like you have hormonal issues, one thing you really can't go wrong with is cruciferous vegetables and mm -hmm. right. So like the broccoli, the kale, the um, arugula, which has sulforaphane in it, um, bok choy, Brussels sprouts. That's so, one thing I don't eat enough of bok choy. I feel like I only mm -hmm. eat that when I go out. I need to like cook that. Do you, but that's such a great reminder, you know, that don't just eat the foods that you're comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh like gosh, yes. get outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. I always try and pick like rotate through my fruits and veggies every time I go to the grocery store so that I'm making sure I'm getting all the nutrients and like the fuel for my gut microbiome that I need because our microbes feed off of different foods. Like they need yes. a variety. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I don't know if you ever heard that episode I think you'd like it with Dr. Tracy Bone. I had her on the podcast and she's like an expert in the microbiome. And she mm. said, eat 30 different plants per week. And when she first said that, I was like, she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to edit this out now. People are going to lose their mind. And then she explained. And I realized like actually how easy that is. Like for the health of your microbiome, eat 30 different plants. But that could mean like, if you're eating, say you've made, I don't know, I'm just thinking of this paleo bread that I love to make. Well, okay, that has almond flour, that has rosemary, that has garlic, that has oregano, you know, yeah. that has like five different plant foods right in there. Then if you have a salad, you might have five more plant foods. So that's 10 
different plants you've already had in one day. And, totally. you know, having 30 per week, uh, I think is a good goal to have. And it's totally, totally doable. So I just really wanted to emphasize what you were saying there, you know, like eating variety, don't always eat the same foods all the time. Now let's take a moment for a short break. I get so many questions about how to grow the healthiest hair possible. And while reducing processed foods and increasing whole foods like healthy fats and good quality protein is the foundation for healthy hair, it's also important to do a personal care detox in order to achieve your thickest, healthiest, shiny hair ever. And when I say personal care detox, I mean going through all your current products like your body care, your skin care, and of course your hair care and evaluating your overall toxic load based on the products that you're using. Before I became a nutritionist, I did just that and I was shocked. I found that the large majority of products I was using contained the toxic 10 ingredients. Things like parabens, coal tar derived colors, formaldehyde releasing agents, many different hormone disrupting chemicals too, like artificial fragrance, which contain phthalates. Now for the full list, if you have my second cookbook, Joyous Detox, just flip to page 57 for that toxic 10. The conventional hair care industry is the furthest thing from clean beauty, and it isn't regulated the same way that food is. In fact, according to the David Suzuki Foundation, up to 80% of conventional personal care products contain this toxic 10. When it comes to hair products, remember that what goes on your scalp gets into your whole body. Using products with toxic chemicals may be a faster way to absorb these chemicals into your body than actually eating them, since it completely bypasses the digestive system and can get directly into your bloodstream. Finding non-toxic ways to clean your hair is really why I created the Joyous Health line of natural hair care back in 2013. I believe in the importance of creating beauty products that are not only safe for you and the planet, but also luxurious and totally effective. I am so proud of the line of our hair care products I created because the real secret ingredient for soft, shiny hair is in its simplicity. Our natural lavender shampoo and conditioner are made with 100% plant-based and organic ingredients that are safe to use on all hair types. We really focus on simple, all natural and functional ingredients that nourish and soothe your scalp for your silkiest, shiniest hair days. Each bottle contains ingredients like organic lavender and rosemary oils to promote hair growth, to help stimulate circulation, which helps to really nourish your hair follicles, and to prevent dry, itchy scalp and to manage hair conditions like dandruff and hair loss. Our products also contain aloe vera and jojoba oil to condition and hydrate your hair and leave each and every strand feeling luxurious and nourished. What goes into your shampoo and conditioner is just as important as what's left out, since many traditional ingredients can strip your hair's natural oils and cause irritation and flakiness. That's why our Joyous Health Natural Lavender Shampoo and Conditioner are free from GMOs, sulfates, parabens, phthalates, harsh preservatives, harsh detergents. Keeping our hair care line as pure and safe as possible was my number one priority because it plays a critical role in scalp and hair follicle health. And since another key to soft and silky hair is to go more days between each wash, I also created two dry shampoos, one each for light and dark hair. Our unique formulations use non-toxic biodegradable and organically produced ingredients like tapioca, arrowroot starch, chickweed, and bentonite clay. Plus each container is joyously free from artificial fragrance, talc, dyes, parabens, phthalates, and gluten. So you can soothe your scalp with organic rosemary oil and breathe in the natural fragrance of orange and butter, vanilla oils, essential oils, for your freshest locks between washes. It's the best way to give your hair a fresh, voluminous look without any harsh or drying chemicals. If you want to try pure, safe, organic hair care that actually works, check out shopjoyoushealth.com slash hair dash care for our full lineup of natural hair care products and use code podcastbeauty10 for 10% off your entire order. And now back to our guest. 
Um, Any other foods that you recommend for healthy skin? I feel like we've covered a lot of it. I think really one of the, again, like a really good tip that people could take away with is just adding a handful of like leafy spring mix greens to Mm -hmm. your lunch, breakfast, lunch, or dinner every single day is a great way to just add in that fiber, add in the nutrients. And it's a really easy thing to do. Just like throw it on your plate. Yeah. That's a great suggestion. Also too, like so many of those mixed greens are already like pre-washed. So that's like a no brainer. Totally. You just plop it on your plate. (laughs) And they're usually greens that we don't we wouldn't pick in the grocery store, like bok choy or Swiss chard. And like, they're like in the mini version. So they're cute and crunchy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, now what about, are there any supplements that you recommend? Yeah. So I actually have like a full breakdown in my guide, the acne protocol, but oh, great. Yeah. But a few supplements that like you can't go wrong with are, um, turmeric. I know you're a huge fan of turmeric Mm -hmm. and adding that to your diet, either in like the powder form or like in the curcumin, like, um, supplement form is amazing. And it's, it's pretty safe for everybody. It's just amazing at lowering inflammation and it's amazing for digestion and your skin. So I feel like you can't go wrong with that. Um, there are two supplements that I do, recommend just being really cautious of with acne. And again, that is, so omega threes are amazing, obviously from food sources, but also amazing for really repairing the skin's like ability to glow. I find it really helps that glow from within, but we do have to be cautious with algae based omegas because algae based Mm. omegas can again, trigger a lot of acne in people. So I usually recommend going for like a wild uh, fish source, like a seafood source, omega if possible. And then have your blood work tested if you can, because a lot of people will blindly take supplements like a B complex mm-hmm. or B12. And sometimes the levels are high and that can trigger. And even if your levels are low, you really want to make sure you're, you're addressing those. That is definitely key. Yeah. That's so key. I remember, uh, like, I don't know, five years ago or something, I don't know why I started taking B12. I totally forget why (laughs) I was taking like a, I don't know, maybe it was just one of those things. I think I'm low in B12 because my fingers and toes are tingly. Um, Anyways, I was taking a sublingual. So like under the time B12 and then just so happened, like a few months later, I had some like routine blood work done. And my doctor called me on like a Sunday night and he's like, are you taking B12? I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, you need to stop. Wow. And he like told me my level and I was like, whoa, that's insane. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm absorbing that B12 really well. I'm going to stop doing that. Totally. Um, so I, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Now I read a lot about, you know, different, um, different supplements that are good for skin. And I feel like dim has kind of a cult following for people who suffer from acne Um, do you have any thoughts on dim? Obviously, you know, that's one of the phytonutrients that's found in like cruciferous vegetables. Mm -hmm. Do you use that in your practice at all? I do love dim. It is really powerful. So I usually include it as an ingredient in a like hormone supporting supplement that will have other ingredients. Like, um, I really love the Astro smart supplement from smart solutions. That one is yes. that one that I talk about all the time. I take that. Um, I take yeah? that. Okay. I, you know amazing. what? I've been taking that. I want to say about a year and a half, but you know what? I actually only take it three times per week. Now I used to take it every day and I went down okay. to three because I think okay. it was giving me headaches, but yeah, let's talk about that. So that's something you, you recommend to, is that, do you just do that when you see there's hormonal imbalance as well? I mean, I guess there's always, do you always see some form of hormonal imbalance with acne, just like you always see digestive issues? I mean, yes, like just from the symptoms, it's hard to tell unless the client does have testing done, but there obviously are so many symptoms we can look at, uh, that will, will give us insight into the body. But I personally love that supplement for, and so you definitely don't take that if you're on our like hormonal birth control, because that mm-hmm. could interfere, but it's very detoxifying, like supporting the detox phase one and phase two. And it's amazing for like, like estrogen metabolism and reducing inflammation. And I, it's just a really well-rounded supplement that I think is a really beautiful and powerful blend for women. 
Yes. But do always talk with your practitioner about it just because, um, again, like if you're on hormones or something, it, you do have to be careful. Yeah, totally. Um, that's a great suggestion. Any other, what about like, are you a big fan of probiotics, vitamin D? Are there any other things that you really like? What about zinc? I know we talked a bit about zinc. Like, do you recommend people take a zinc supplement or look more to food? Yeah. Zinc is really, really important. I usually, usually recommend it like short term, um, and then getting it through food after that. It's also amazing for the immune system. And as we, as some of us may not know, the skin is a part of the immune system. So that's yes. crucial. Yeah. And then I'm a huge fan of probiotics. I think also one thing that could be important for people to remember is that I think it's actually good for us to switch up our probiotics every once in a while, mm-hmm. because it's giving our body different strains, right? So I, I found a huge benefit when I swapped my probiotics, um, last year. And I also struggle with rosacea. And I found like when I swapped mm. my probiotics, I guess that was bringing in a new host of ba- beneficial bacteria to my gut and my rosacea basically completely went away. So that was That's really- amazing. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is, yeah, the other thing is so many different strains can be histamine producing. Yeah. So a lot of people can react negatively to like with skin issues specifically Mm -hmm. um, to things like probiotics. So it's a lot of times it's just like trial and error, you know, that's why it's good to work with someone like you who is a practitioner because you can help guide people because no two people are going to be, you know, the exact same. So is there, are there any other things that you can think of that you wanted to share that we didn't uh, touch on today? Oh my gosh. I feel like we could chat for hours and hours (laughs) and hours, Yeah, but I do have tons of information on my social channels as well. And if people are ever curious about, if you know, if you're listening to this and you know, you have a question about acne, please send me a, a message. I love to chat about it. Yeah. So you mentioned something about some acne protocol you had. Is that like an ebook or something you have? Yeah. So it's my ebook guide and it's called the acne protocol. And it's basically I've blended nutrition, supplements, skincare, mindset, lifestyle, like everything into one guide that will help you clear your acne. Amazing. So we will make sure that we link to that in the show notes. And can you just share where people can find and connect with you, like share your website and, and social channels? Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm at the pure life. So that's T H E P U R E L I F E the pure life underscore. And then my website is the pure life.ca. I'm also on TikTok. If anybody is on there as well, (laughs) it's an interesting place to be, but I hope you guys say hi. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So we will, um, we'll link that all up in the show notes as well. And uh, feel free to reach out to Cicely if you have any questions for her. And thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge. This was a really great chat. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you, Joy. And it truly is such an incredible thing you're doing here. I think it's really important for women to know that they're not alone. You know, adult acne is on the rise. And yeah, you are not alone. So thank you so much, Joy. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you.